welcome back to the channel everyone. Thank you for being here. We're excited to make this video. We feel very fortunate to have what we have here and we wanted to share with you the things that we found very necessary for living on a homestead. Now everybody has a different situation and everybody's going to use maybe a little bit different tools. So is this list specifically for you? No. It is trying to cover all the bases, uh, the general tools that you're going to need to do uh, garden work and take care of your property, uh, to work on your vehicles and equipment, uh, to do some woodworking, and uh, to do general maintenance around your house also. There's a lot of different tools that you're going to need. And we're going to start this video series with our gardening tools. Now, many of you may have uh, a lot of gardening tools. And that's fantastic. We believe this list is the, the minimum that you're going to need uh, to get started. Maybe, maybe a little bit more than minimum. There might be a few extras thrown in there, but we found them very, very helpful. Let's start with the absolute most necessary tool you're going to need. Let me grab it here. A good spade-headed shovel. Uh, I cannot say how much work this shovel gets because it is almost daily and you're going to want a good, good quality shovel with a good hickory handle and a good uh, solid uh, construction and nice, thick, sharp, well obviously this, obviously this is dull now, but uh, a good um, shovel head on it. Now this one, I, I recommend wood tools. Any fiberglass tools that you get are going to break down over time. You're going to get slivers in your hands and they just do not last. These wood handle tools, if you take care of them, will last. And I recommend highly keeping all your tools indoors and not letting them see the elements outside. I mean, that goes without saying, but I'm going to show you this tool here. Okay, let's put the shovel right here. This is the next tool here in the list, and this is a hoe. This is really important for gardening, for pushing around uh, uh, dirt and digging trenches, um, furrows, you know, for your, uh, for your seed beds. And you can see the handle on this. I'm going to try to replace this because this is just nasty. This wasn't mine. This was left here by the previous homeowner and it was left outside along with most of the tools that he left here. Maybe that was by design, he took the good ones with him, but so be it. So next important tool is a good pitchfork. Now there's going to be some discussion on how many tines. This is a ten tine. Uh, some people prefer um, six tine or even four tine, which is easier to move hay for livestock. Now we don't have any livestock, so this may vary on what you're doing on your homestead. And this one is fantastic for uh, moving compost and most specifically wood chips for our Back to Eden garden. This is a fantastic tool, this 10 time right here. Uh, again, good quality, hickory handle on it, a must. Now the next tool, you have a very important job with these, is to rake up your leaves. Now those leaves, if, if you watched our other video about uh, leaf mold and creating compost with leaf mold, it's incredibly rich and good for your garden and these are invaluable. Um, now, would we like a lawn vacuum? Sure. Can we afford a lawn vacuum? No. Uh, so having a good rake, a good lawn rake or a leaf rake is uh, very, very important. Also for, you know, just cleaning up and um, the metal or the plastic, I can't say which I like better. Uh, the metal's more flexible, but this one is fairly stiff, which is good. I have another one which is uh, too flimsy and it does not rake the leaves properly. And this plastic one is, is maybe a little bit too stiff. It doesn't, uh, doesn't flex and allow me to do the job properly. So I'd probably go with a metal, metal time one here. All right, next one is a good garden rake, especially with the Back to Eden garden. This is really important. 
Uh, this is really, really going to dig into your soil for you and move things around in your garden, move the soil around um, more than most tools. I mean, the hoe is very small and it's used for a very specific purpose, but uh, the, this garden rake is, I, I use this as much as a shovel, I would say. So a good, good, good garden rake is also very, very important. All right, let's get to it. Oh, yes. Now, you've seen me use mechanical means, uh, powered mechanical means to dig my post holes for the majority of uh, the fencing and uh, different projects we have around here on the homestead. But a good post hole digger is very important. I did use this uh, extensively on the blueberry and grape uh, garden to dig the holes and it came in incredibly handy and you never know when you're going to be putting in posts for other projects, other fencing, uh, whatever, what it, whatever it may be, a clothesline, you know, a dog leash run for the dog. Uh, there's just a lot of projects where you need to dig holes for posts and drop posts in and this is a really great tool if you don't have, obviously, uh, powered means, which is really, really nice. All right, we're almost done with the long, tall tools here. This one is incredibly important for keeping and maintaining uh, your trees. Now, uh, this uh, pole saw here, it's a little flimsy. I don't know if I'd recommend this one. This was a uh, tractor supply company. The blade is pretty flimsy and it doesn't cut the best and it has this uh, branch lopper here which you can extend uh, the pole and is this my favorite tool? No, but it's really really handy. Would I like a better quality one? Yes. Um, but to, uh, to clean branches out and to get to things you cannot get, you know, I've got a lot of branches still that I need to take care of that are overhanging the garden and scraping on the top of the vehicles as we are overhanging the driveway scraping out the vehicles as we come in and this is the perfect tool for that. Also for uh, dead branches up to 15 feet high um, that may or may not come down and fall uh, on you as you're working underneath your trees. This is important to have um, if you can't get up there with a ladder or this might just be an easier tool to use than a ladder and a small pruning saw. Speaking of pruning saws, I couldn't decide. Well, actually I did decide, but I wanted to show you both. This is a bow saw, and this is a folding pruning saw. <clears throat> I don't particularly like bow saws. I don't know why. I just find them awkward to use. Uh, this one's very old, and it's got a fairly flimsy blade on it. Not my favorite tool, but it's good to have if you don't have one of these. This is one of my favorite tools. This folding saw is wonderful. I might put this down in uh, the description below and put an Amazon link to it because I can't say enough about it. I bought this on Amazon this past year because my last uh, folding saw broke on me. <laughs> and I, I take care of my things pretty well. My last folding saw was a Coughlin's Camp Saw and I think I bought it in 1999 and it lasted me until 2017 so you know it was plastic and it was cheap but I took good care of it and it lasted but it finally broke and this one has an all metal body and the blade is not very flimsy it's, it's nice and stiff it's got this great locking mechanism here and you can use your index finger to uh, lock it back like a knife oh this thing is fantastic pa or, nice rubber handle on here and it's thick and you can get a great grip on it and um, and saw uh, I can't say enough about this is that the super saw 8.2 uh, inch super saw 8.2 inch and I like I said I'll put a description down below but if this is all you have the bow saw go for it keeping in that same realm a good pair of uh, bypass pruners for your uh, fruit tree pruning. Also, obviously, this is going to be great for fruit tree pruning as well as 
our next tool, a, a pair of actual loppers, right? So all these are going to be used, and the pole saw, for your orchards, for your grapes, for your um, all your fruit bushes, your asparagus, your all your perennial um, uh, fruits in the garden, like your raspberries and things like that. Cleaning out along your fence lines, which is really, really important, keeping those fences good, straight, and true, and to keep them from getting pulled over by trees growing up through them or vines pulling them apart. You need all these tools to take care of all those jobs. Very, very important that you have these. In that same realm is a good axe. Now, we do not burn wood for heat in our home. So, a small axe like this, a small camp axe, uh, you've seen this in, other, in our other videos. We did a review on this, uh, several reviews actually. It's probably the best axe under $25 or around $25 that they make anywhere. It is phenomenal. Even Wrangler Star uh, talks this one up. And I won't go into it, but um, if you heat your home with wood, obviously I'd recommend a full-size axe and a mall. Uh, besides having one of these probably it's very hard to narrow down um, just to 15 or just to 20 tools but if I had to and I have this is the one that I recommend for our homestead because we're not burning wood in our house but if you are get a full-size axe all right let's go and this one as you can see it's got some use to it and I use this a ton a ton this is a pickaxe and here in East Texas, this is a must because we have some nasty, nasty, nasty red clay and you can't get through it with many tools. This pickaxe will do that job. And, um, you know, I can dig down 18 inches with my shovel, no problem. But after that, got to use a pickaxe because you're not going much farther with a shovel <laughs> in, in that nasty clay that we have going on here. So. This is great for digging trenches, for clearing out trenches. You've seen me do that in other videos, and I highly recommend you have a pickaxe on or at your property on your homestead. Now, we've got, of course, an eight pound sledge. And this one was left to me by the previous homeowner. And you can tell that it was not taken care of, as was uh, just like a hoe. Um, the handle is, uh, it needs to have a, a collar on it, uh, so, and I'll probably do a, a nice little project and put a nice sheet metal collar on this um, to keep it from getting all beat up right here. It's about ready to snap, and I don't know when it's going to snap, but I used it, and it works well, and as you can see, we've got a new handle for it. So we'll do a video on that, fitting the handle on this new uh, or on this old 8 pound sledge. We're probably going to do a little restoration here because it's, it's kind of nasty. You could use some cleaning. So, anyway, I'm having a good sledgehammer. Why? Okay. We have a lot of stakes in the garden that we've driven in uh, to hold um, string lines, to hold uh, formwork back. Uh, this is great if you're uh, pouring concrete and pounding in the, uh, the stakes for the formwork. Also, uh, for pounding in um, T posts, metal T posts in your garden. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a bonus. We're going to go actually 16. I'll give 15 and a bonus uh, a tool. Let me talk about this last tool here, and then I'll go back to the bonus tool because it does relate to the sledgehammer. Invaluable tool. Invaluable tool. This is a come-along. This is a lug-all come-along. This is a high-quality come-along, and I would recommend finding the highest quality come-along that you can. Here's why. I have some friends. We've done some fencing uh, with them with their tools using a... Uh, not a Harbor Freight come along, but it, it sure does look like the tractor supply company come alongs, the stamp metal come alongs that are very thin on the side are probably the same ones they get from the same supplier in China that Harbor Freight does, that Lowe's does, that Home Depot does. I gotta say, 
they're junk. They bend really easily, and it, when you have this cable under tension, you don't want something that's going to let go on you or that's going to break. It's very dangerous. So, it, was this expensive? For me, no, because I found it at a pawn shop, and I paid 25 20 or $25 for it, I can't remember, I did a video on it. Um, go check it out. But these, I think, retail for $250 to $300, somewhere around there. It is worth every penny. The fencing that I did all along this property and uh, for the gardens, for, uh, yes, for both gardens, we pulled it with this come along and it is a champ. It is very strong, it's very powerful. And it is a versatile, versatile tool that everybody needs on their homestead. You can push, or sorry, pull um, a lot of things with this. So we, our riding lawnmower, our zero turn died, and we had to get it on our trailer to take it to the deer dealership. How did we get it up there? Use the come along. We got our Troy built uh, rototiller delivered and it was uh, put in our trailer by forklift. We had to get it out. How did we do that? This come along. This thing has been seen a lot of use and I highly recommend that you have one uh, in your arsenal. It's not necessarily for the garden, but having it on the homestead, I mean, we did use it for the garden fencing. It, it was, you need to tension and tighten that fence somehow and this is the number one way to do it okay here's the bonus here's the bonus tool this is a post hole driver or post driver and this post driver takes the place of this sledge here so the sledge is a little hard to get over your head driving in six to eight foot T posts for uh, your fencing Obviously, you'd have to stand up on something taller or be like six foot four to swing this thing and knock in your uh, T posts. This fits right over the top of it. And it's probably, I'd say this one is 10, 10 or 12 pounds. It's definitely, definitely, probably 12 pounds. And we've used it a ton, uh, obviously, driving in tons of. He posts all over the place for tomatoes, for um, support for our uh, cattle panel arches, for our pole beans, uh, around the garden, uh, in the greenhouse to drive those posts down for uh, also for support that we tied our, our ends to. Great tool. So take your pick. This is more versatile. This is more specific. This does a better job for T-posts than this, but you can do more jobs with this. So it's really a toss-up. I had a hard time coming up with just 15, um, so we'll call it 15 and a bonus. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave it down below. If you have different opinion about what you need on your homestead, let me know. But I think this list was fairly comprehensive, and I'm not done yet. I actually skipped one. And this one is really important also. And I skipped it because I didn't pay attention. It wasn't a wood handled tool or a piece of metal. This sprayer, I have about 10 of these pump sprayers. <clears throat> Extremely useful for the homestead. I, I would recommend having 10, 12 of these things all over the place because, all right, I use them for, in this one specifically here, I've got a uh, copper sulfate solution and water solution and this is for antimicrobial purposes killing on our plants and our fruit trees um, whatever disease or fungus or uh, you know nasty thing is growing on them this is great for that purpose we've got two or three over here I can't even bring them all into the the camera shot here because they're everywhere I have some ant poison, uh, carpenter ant poison in one. That stays separate. I've got some calcium carbonate in one to spray on for blight for tomatoes uh, in the garden. I've got one that's mixed orange oil and, uh, and water to uh, spray on to kill bugs. I've got one that's neem oil and uh, Dr. Bronner's cell suds. 
that is a very effective uh, insecticide. I've got one that says Dawn Dish Detergent and uh, Water, and that one is phenomenal for killing wasps. Uh, you do not need these harsh chemicals. Dawn dish soap and, and water, about one tablespoon of dish soap to a gallon of water, and it'll knock them right out of the air. It's phenomenal. I do not use or rarely use. There's some, there have been some big, big, big nasty, I have to admit, big nasty wasp nests. The red wasps here are, uh, they sting you and it feels like your arm is on fire, your leg is on fire. I have hit those with some chemicals, but uh, for individuals or for small nests, that Dawn dish soap does wonders. I'm rambling on about that. Like I said, there's a million things I could put in all these different um, sprayers. Get a lot of these sprayers and get good quality ones. I do have to say that. So this one is a DB Smith. And <coughs> this one is, <coughs> excuse me. Definitely better made than your average Tractor Supply or Home Depot or Harbor Freight sprayer. Those are okay, and I've had some good luck with the groundwork, uh, from, groundwork brand from Tractor Supply with the metal uh, wand on it. But I bought several other ones because they just... They deteriorate over time. Depending Buy on the quality price. ones, they're probably $30 as compared to $15 for the cheap ones. It's well worth it because they last a lot longer. Okay, so I'm probably going to put, this one's been great. I'm going to put the link probably down below, uh, an Amazon link uh, for you guys for this one. All right, now we're done. <laughs> and we thank you again for being here. Watch for our next video. We're going to do that series of videos. We're going to do power tools and we're going to do hand tools, and we're going to do, say, like automotive tools. Some will cross over, right? So you're going to have some hand tools, as you can see behind me, that will cross over into doing mechanical work, uh, like sockets. I might put the sockets in the automotive video as opposed to the just the hand tool video. Um, we're not probably going to do a woodworking video at this time, because a lot of these tools back here can be used for woodworking and or other projects. Uh, I'm not building furniture here yet, yet, and uh, when we do, we will go over um, some amazing uh, hand tools for those projects. Thank you. Give us the thumbs up. That helps us out a lot. And share this video with your friends. Share it on social media. Pin it on Pinterest because that really helps. If you enjoyed the video, leave us a nice comment. Appreciate it. Have a great day, and we will see you on the next video.